This is Lab Poxy, Fast Cure Poxy. Got it from Concrete Floor Shop in Houston. I really recommend them. They've got really good prices. For a three gallon kit of 100% solids epoxy, which is also Fast Cure. And that comes pigmented. A lot of epoxies, you gotta add the pigment um, because you gotta pay for it separately. This comes pre-pigmented. The color of this one is Light Concrete. That's the name of the color. So um, let's check this out. Kind of tough to open. I don't like them, but you're not going to spill it. You knock it over, which is one good thing about it. So there's different teeth. Grab one tooth at a time. Go to the next one. And you can get them all before you pull it off. What you do not want to do is get one tooth and then pull it like this because you're gonna bend that lid. And then when it's time to put it back on, it's gonna open itself up because you bent it. Then you're gonna spill it in your van or truck when you tip it over when you're driving too fast. Especially the canned lids. These are a little bit better about resealing, even if you bend them. But the canned lids, man, do not bend them. Make sure you pop all sides of it and then pull it off smooth. Two A's and one B is a two to one ratio. All epoxies, all polys are different. Some are one to one, some are two to one, some are three to ones. They're all different. So don't assume anything. Always read the spec sheets, Google them, read the spec sheets that you find online. Protection for the plastic tarp. These plastic sheets are three and a half mils, but even if you use something like this to protect your driveway and you spill epoxy on it, if you spill epoxy on these sheets, you got about 30 seconds before it penetrates. So you want to pretend like this is concrete. This is just like a backup, just in case um, you spill something. So you want to work on cardboard or parchment paper. Any type of paper is fine. Just do not mix up anything on a customer's driveway. You know, don't mix up anything on these thin sheets of plastic. These plastic sheets are just for backup. You don't want to be the guy who ruin a customer's driveway because you were too cheap to use cardboard. I mean, really think about your reputation. That's really important. Take small steps, think about, you know, am I, am I, am I really, like, like, pretend like this is your house. Would you want someone spilling stuff on your driveway? No. That's just a rule for everything. If you do that, like, just, just, just use that rule, think about it as if it's your own property, like that's the answer to almost all your questions when you're deciding what to do next. So when you mix up coatings, you always have two buckets. I'm gonna explain that. the reason you have two buckets is because one's gonna be the dump bucket. So two of these have the gray in it, the A's. The A's have the pigment, the B's are clear. That's generally the rule. Uh, some epoxies are weird and the B's pigmented, but generally the A's are pigmented. The reason you have two buckets is because when you pour all this out, you'll notice there's some left behind. Now, theoretically, if this had been the mixing bucket and I had A in here and I had a B and I mixed it, the A, some of it, would have still be clung to the sidewalls and the bottom. So later, after I mixed this, if I didn't pour it into a new container, I would have take, taken my mini roller or my brush and I would have dipped into the bucket, touched the sidewall, grabbing that part A, and I would have transferred to the floor. And that part A would have never dried. Or if I ran out of epoxy, I needed a little bit more, 
at the end I would turn this upside down to try to get everything out, which is a very bad idea, because that A would have oozed out onto the floor and you'd have spots that never dry. So you always mix in one container, pour it into the next container after it's mixed. So A, B, mix, add my solvent, mix, and then pour into a new container and then use this to pour onto the floor because whatever you pour in here first, it's gonna be already catalyzed, already mixed epoxy, not just A or B. So this epoxy comes pre-pigmented. Uh, pigment is just chromium, typically, or titanium dioxide, which is metal powder. It's been liquid liquefied, but it's heavier than the coatings. So what happens is during the packaging, it settles. So the bottom of this has most of the pigment. So even though I poured most of this out, if I didn't scrape the bottom, then this floor would be semi-transparent because it doesn't have all the pigment it should have. It's at the bottom. Look at that. That's like an eighth of an inch of coating stuck to the bottom. And that's mainly the metal, the chromium. That's where we get the word color, Greek word chrome. So we need to scrape the bottom of this. So always scrape the bottom of your A. Make sure you get all the paper. Now some epoxy, some urethanes, they give you a pigment pack. And the A and the B is clear. And what you need to do is when you have a pigment pack, you pour the A into the mixing bucket first without the B and you add the pigment and you mix it for 10 minutes. Just the pigment and all the A. And you do it before you add the B. You make sure it's dispersed evenly because if you just add the A and the B all at once and the pigment all at once and mix it for three minutes, that three minutes is not enough time to get the pigment uniform. So what's going to happen is your floor is going to be semi-transparent because the pigment's going to float to the bottom because it makes it long enough. So I still got some more left at the bottom of this, and I can't get it all. So I'm adding solvent to this floor anyway. So I'm gonna take the solvent and pour it into here and use it to loosen it up and pour it in here. You can add a little solvent to the A with the pigment just to get the pigment stirred. That's not gonna hurt anything. Use an acetone to thin it. It's going to be my solvent. Uh, I'm going to thin this about 10%. Each installer has their own preference on how much to use. Some coatings you can't thin. Most of them you can. Most of them you thin about 10%. So I'm going to take about a quart and a half of acetone and add it to this three gallon kit. Put a half a quart. Another half a quart. That's one gallon so far. I'm sorry, one quart so far. This is kind of annoying to have to do this, but what's even more annoying is having a floor that's transparent. We 
later on I'll add another quart if I want to. You don't have to thin it exactly 10%. It can be 5%, it can be 15%. Now you don't want to go too high, otherwise you'll get solvent trapping, which means the coating will dry on the top before the solvent escapes. But that typically happens on fast drying coatings during the winter or when you're using a slow drying solvent. But I've worked with this material before, this is fine. We're not putting it on extremely psychotically thick. So we're not gonna have that problem with this material. Now we're gonna mix this up for 10 minutes to make sure the pigment is uniform. In the mixing, you wanna use a big mortar mixer. You don't want those, you don't want one of those really small spiral skinny mixers because you're not gonna thoroughly mix up the coating. Um, a lot of people use those real small ones and the coating like doesn't properly cure and they wonder why it's because they're not using one big enough. Um, always check the speed before you stick it in because almost all drills have two settings and sometimes it gets bumped at the high speed speed. Now if I had stuck it in on high speed like that it would have splattered everywhere all over the house. So every single time before you stick it in here, check it. Otherwise, it's gonna cost you a lot of money one day. And you have to go back, get more coating. If it's on the weekend, it blows your whole week because you have to come back Monday and reinstall because it just, don't do it. So just take your time and check it. 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna get Vortex, which means you get in those spiral things. Basically, as fast as you can without splattering. 